Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, and today I'll be reading an Arlequin of Exocenter by me. So let's get into it. Your mission had gone wrong. Horribly wrong. A burst of light. Searing pain. And then... Nothing. No shapes. No shadows. Just an endless abyss of black. Arlequino doesn't even know yet. You press a hand to the stone wall beside you, using it as a guide as you take slow, steady steps. She would be furious, and more than that, she'd be worried, scared for you. Despite her sharp exterior and the mask of composure she wore like an armor, you knew her better. You'd seen beneath the surface past that cold mask she wore for everyone. And as you approached her private quarters, your heart began to race. You can't see it, but you can feel the familiar weight of the door in front of you. You hesitate, your hand hovering over the handle. How would she react? Would she be angry with you? Or worse, pity you? You take a deep breath, bracing yourself, and push the door open. The room is quiet, save for the sound of papers being shuffled and the soft crackling of a fire. You can smell the faint scent of smoke and ink, mixing together in the warmth of the space. Why on? Arlequina's voice is calm, but there is a subtle undertone of concern. She was not expecting you, and you don't look very fine either as you walk in. Her footsteps are soft as she crosses the room, and you can feel the shift in the air as she draws near. What happened? Why are you back already? You open your mouth to speak, but the words catch in your throat, and the silence stretches on. Finally... You take a shaky breath, forcing yourself to say it. I... I can't see. There is a bit of silence, the kind that makes your heart sink even further. You could almost see the gears turning their mind as she processed what you've said, as if the words did not quite make sense. What do you mean you can't see? Her voice is sharper now, more insistent, and you can feel her presence right in front of you, her breast just inches from your face. During the mission, something went wrong. There was an explosion, a flash of light, and I haven't been able to see since. Her hand reaches out before you can brace yourself. Her fingers brushing against your cheek. The touch is gentle, but there is a tension there. A controlled urgency that you recognize all too well. You can feel her eyes on you, searching, assessing. Her other hand takes hold of your wrist, guiding you to the chair in the corner of the room. Sit, she orders her tone leaving no room for argument, and you comply, sinking into the seat, your breath unsteady. We'll get a healer. We'll find someone who can fix this. She says after a long pause, her voice firm, determined, and you shake your head, your heart twisting painfully in your chest. I don't think it can be fixed, Arlequino. The damage, it's too much, they said. They said it's permanent. The words hang in the air, and for a moment, you're afraid she'll lash out in anger. You know she doesn't handle helplessness well, and the thought of you being so vulnerable, of being something she can't protect, not all the time. It might destroy her, or maybe just then. She will know how much of a burden you are and decide to leave you altogether. 
but instead of all of that, she kneels in front of you, her hands cupping your face with a tenderness that takes your breath away. We'll do our best, I promise you. And if it doesn't work out, then I suppose I let you know. You reach up, cutting her off, your hands finding hers, your fingers tangling together. Stop. Don't say anything yet. You're here. That's what matters. You came back to me. She leans in closer, her forehead resting against yours. I don't care if you can't see. She whispers. I just need you here. Alive. I can't lose you. The vulnerability in her words makes your chest tighten. You've always known she cared for you deeply. But hearing her like this, it's almost unbearable. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still me. I'm still here. Her hands tighten around yours. Her fingers trembling slightly. And for a long moment, she says nothing. But you can feel the weight of her emotions in the silence. With you, she's always allowed herself to be vulnerable. In ways she never would with anyone else. I'll make sure you're safe. No one will touch you again. No one will take advantage of this. I can promise you that. You smile faintly, feeling the weight of her promise. You're always so protective of me. Because I have to be. She pulls away just enough to cup your chin, tilting your face up toward her. An instinctual response. She knows you can't say, and yet she can't help it. I won't let anyone harm you. Not now. And not ever. And don't ever think that this... That this will change anything. It doesn't change who you are. You're still you. You're strong. You're capable. You'll find a way around us. Just like we always have. I trust you. You say quietly. Her hand resting against her chest, feeling the steady beat of her heart beneath your palm. And she covers your hand with hers, holding it there. Good. Because I'm not going anywhere. You can trust me on that too. And for the first time since you lost your eyesight, you feel a little less afraid. Because you know, you'll have her by your side.